Okay, so it is tear down day. We are heading out. And I was going to show you, or I am going to show you, how we tear our site down. So let's uh, take a quick gander. So we put the extra chairs in. I uh, kind of cleaned everything out a little bit, get this organized. Uh, we got one table already folded and put it away. The other one is over here, partially put away. If you get a chance, if you have these types of tables, I know a lot of people do, uh, shoot you a little bit of a dry lubricant down these holes. It makes it easier to, uh, to get these legs go in and out. <laughs> Store it in our trusty basement. And then I take the uh, the Royal Gourmet griddle and set it on top. And I let one leg hang over the edge because it's just a little bit longer than these tables when they're folded. And I kind of help lock it in place that I kind of slide it all back. And now we're going to fold up the chairs. First, we'll get all the leaves out and the one gazillion stink bugs. I don't know what that's all about. I don't ever remember those things as a kid. These things are almost impossible anymore to get back into the bags. I think the trick to this is kind of stuffing all this inside the best you can. And then simply kind of compress this right here. These are really nice chairs as well. Um, I think we got these at Sam's. And uh, they're rated for like 600 pounds, which if I ever get that guy, that big, guys, uh, you can call me out on it. All right, so that works, do the other. The name of this is Guidesman. Again, I think we got these at Sam's Warehouse. That or it was Menards. Could be Menards. Okay, so now we have our tables loaded the griddle. I've got all of our chairs. I do keep some of that. Uh, this stuff is pretty good. This dry lube. This is the stuff I was telling you about to put in to spray on you know, like the legs of those tables and anything that moves because uh, this won't be wet and it won't attract dust to your uh, slides or anything that moves. Right, You want to keep it lubricated but clean and dry. So, hence the word dry, dry loop. All right, continuing on. Next, we're gonna tear down the pet gazebo. These pet gazebos are really nice. Uh, they allow you to secure your pets, put them in place, and uh, they still have a pretty good sized view. They're small dogs. And we were using this for my sister's dog, who's an Italian Greyhound. One thing we did find out <clears throat> is if your dog is kind of tall, like an Italian Greyhound, they can try to wedge themselves up into the canopy and try to climb over. Even though the, um, the canopy is um, basically uh, strapped onto the frame, there's still you know, a gap, if you will, if you force it. Now, she never got out, but she did try. Okay, I'm gonna finish uh, taking this apart and uh, we'll continue on. So sometimes when you're taking these apart, these caps, they're really stuck on there tight. To get them off, I take the cap and I wedge it over the, uh, like the edge of the table or even around the sides of the uh, standing, the rest of the standing framework. So for example, there. 
and that way they'll come off. So now that I've got all of the uh, clips off, I just keep them in a storage bag that I had extra just laying around with a little laptop bag. So I just drop them into there. I'll show you that here in a second once I get it done. So put them in a bag like this. Just Velcro them shut. And then speaking of Velcro, I ordered online a bunch of these different lengths, Velcro strips. And I use these to strap all these together. So I just drop them down the loop or the, the hole right here and then just loop it up. Pull as tight as I can get it because I want these suckers to be tight to the other side. And pull them as tight as you can. And a lot of times I'll take one of these and I will run it this way, right? I've been doing all these on the sides. I'll take one and do it this direction, like towards the top and bottom. That helps square up the, the pack the best you can. Now that we've got all these strapped with Velcro, it's easier to uh, pick up, manage. Not falling everywhere. I'll show you where we store these in the rig. So Tina and I went back and forth for a little while and we're still going back and forth on how we're storing things. And that's going to be, a, I don't know, maybe an ever, never ending battle. And not in a bad way, but I mean, you know, you're limited on space in the RV and most people, including ourselves, uh, and we're just part timers at the moment, struggle on trying to carry too much. So we're really even trying to downsize a little bit just for our weekend warrior trips and our long trips and our planning for something else. And all that information is coming soon. But anyway, back to the story. Let me show you where I store the uh, pet gazebo. As of right now, I have taken the uh, dining table and unscrewed it from the floor and moved it over here. I'm using this as my workstation and this works other than the pedestal there's a there's a post right there that still kind of gets in the way so we're working on a longer longer term solution for that so we were storing everything here including the pet gazebo and it, that pile was getting like way up here <laughs> with all the stuff we had we had the pet gazebo we had uh that gate system there you know i showed you earlier how, how we put that up i'll put a link to that video we're trying to minimize our storage. Behind here was dead space. I mean, we were storing stuff, but it was not useful stuff. So I cleared it out and we put pet gazebo back here. Let me show you. Now you can understand why I use the Velcro straps because it just goes right back here. And all I got to do is just kind of slide it back. So we have some extra pieces of foam and we just cut a, well, actually this one already had a, a slit in it. And I'm going to fit it over the rails here so that if it leans up against the wall, it's not going to cut into the wall. And then we take our canopy components and put it right here. And then the bag of goodies, which are the clips, and it goes back here as well. And... It does not interfere with the reclining action. It works out well. So it goes back here. So there we go. And then I uh, run my cable. And this is this is my InstiConnect uh, USB cable that goes to the InstiConnect. This is still in temporary mode because we haven't figured out the, the complete solution here for our, our for my uh, work desk. But that's what it is right now. So <clears throat> eventually this will be you know connected to the wall where it won't move out of the, you know into the, into the way anyway so then we get these cables prepared like so and now we do our crates we carry one big crate this is what denver and annie sleep in at night so they don't have a run of the rig so we put this uh we fold this up daily and just set it aside but for travel days 
it goes right here and it goes first <clears throat> and it what used to be here before this was the pet uh, gazebo so uh, it as you can tell it added a lot of height and we were getting a lot of stuff all right make sure railing's good all right there we go and because we had a visitor on this trip we had bought a smaller crate for him or we brought one we already had it at home and then all the pups toys uh go here and i believe that's it now i take my desk chair and we will lower it all right lower it it'll go slide it into position and then i raise it and i let the pressure of the chair kind of hold it in place and that's how we store our chair and then i have some other goodies and stuff i have some camera equipment that i'll i'll tuck in here and hold hold in place for our main living area a lot of times we travel with water bottles <clears throat> and we have these little pieces of rugs sometimes if we're on long trips we'll have a big cooler that sits here <clears throat> and or we'll plat we'll put water and of course before you close your slides you want to make sure that you're not you're not extending past the width really of the your of your countertop in this in this instance i have my man drawer i call it rpm 6.8 amps and put my tools back in here and we got the uh, all important poopy bags oh just a little tip here i found these little anchors these little glue on anchors it's like little clips and they work out great We're just pinning stuff up there real quick like uh, uh my daughter's dog's uh, harness So we carry these little portable, uh, expandable garbage cans for outdoors. They work great. Just make sure you inspect them really good. If you have any liquids in it, clean it up first before you wrap it up. And uh, I need to grab my lighter fluid and my diesel fuel. Storage on the, on the campsite pass-through. I think I showed you this earlier, but uh, I'll be unhooking all this, getting off the ramps. Power watchdog, that, that has been awesome. That thing saved me a couple times here just recently. I'll have more to share on that later. All right, I think we're ready to bring the slides in. I'll have to disconnect my Insta Connect and uh, stow it away, but I think we're ready to go. Sorry about the background noise, but as you can see, there's plenty of room here. And then we'll bring in the kitchen slide. Okay, make sure all your water heater's off, all your lights, water pump's off in this case. All right, I think we're ready to go. Kill the air, air conditioning. Off. There we go. Button that up. All right, slides in. Now if you have stabilizers, make sure, like on the, on the strong arms, you need to make sure these things are un, uh, unscrewed. They're not in a locked position when you try to raise the legs. So we'll loosen those up. Raise the rear stabilizers. I've already loosened those by the way. At least I think I did, I better double check. Yep, they're loosened. If 
you have anything here for storage, make sure you finish locking that down. I think for fun, I might put a rubber snake in here one day for Tina. And then one thing I do before I really start batting down the hatches is I run through my entire campsite looking for anything I might have missed. So I'm pretty sure I'm good over here. Lots of leaves. And up, oh, there we go. Look at that. Had I not checked, I would have walked off or drove off and left my well, I'm not sure what you'd call this. <laughs> it's what you use to uh, move logs around in a fire. I think we're good. I had the dog stakes back here. And yeah, nope, got the, the dog's water. All right, I think we're good now. So it really is important to double check your area. Make sure you're not leaving something, you know, that, you know, if they come by and maybe they're cutting grass, uh, you know, damage their, their lawn equipment, uh, or it could be expensive items. So just make sure you scan your area, take your time, don't be in a rush to get out. Just plan accordingly. Do what you can the night before, and then do the rest the next day, and then make an enjoyment out of it. Uh, I know it's a little bit of work, but you know, we do this for fun, not for work. All right. Good dog. All right, kill the power. Clunk. Good, good item there. So, I'm gonna disconnect this from your main 50 amp cord. You should do a visual inspection, make sure nothing is damaged on it mm -hmm. or been tampered with. This looks pretty good. No dirt is on the mm -hmm. connections. All right, and you go. You also want to make sure you don't get these contacts dirty, right? Dirt might create resistance, resistance creates heat, and then you usually have a problem. When you pick these things up and handle them, try to keep them out of the dirt, and then roll them up in a fairly good sized loop. Because remember, it is copper, it is a metal. I've grabbed a few of these, what are these? Rapids? Yeah, rapid. Uh, these are pretty heavy duty uh, Velcro uh, straps. I have an intention to hang this somewhere, but I gotta figure out where. But for now, I just use it to hold everything together. See, it would hang there. And I've actually put some S-hooks in here to hang it, but it's not high enough, so it doesn't really hang. So for now, I just stole it like this. I've got my main cord here. My extension here. All right, do a tug test at least once. Okay, good. You want to raise the legs up just enough to clear the pads if you're using any pads or just up off the concrete, but not high enough to where if this thing were to fall, it's going to hit your truck. So now that I've got this hooked up, I can apply power to the brakes before I detach. So let's do that. So this is my second tug test. drive holding the brakes not moving anywhere so we're good also once you raise these legs and you know I'll leave a gap here but <clears throat> once you raise these legs up and you're setting the pin you might want to hit that pin make sure it goes all the way through to the other side because sometimes they'll get stuck and they won't go through the last thing you want 
is when you're driving this leg to fall down. So uh, give that extra tap. And yes, I know that these are not in here properly, but this is kind of a sloped uh, lot and I needed a little bit of elevation on the driver's side. So there was no reason to put the, <laughs> the, the chocks on the other side because it wasn't gonna roll backwards. All right, time to take the X chocks off. with that and then my drill just sits right here all right ready to back up Also, when you are heading to uh, the dump stations, and if it's busy, you know, my only advice there is to uh, just be patient. Uh, it takes what it takes. Uh, some people are new, never done it before. It's maybe their first time. So uh, I think we were all there at one point. So my advice is just be patient with them while they do their thing. And uh, don't rush at this point and make a mistake. So uh, I'm currently in line. Uh, looks like we have a newbie, which is fine. And uh, he's taking a little bit longer than expected. So uh, yeah, oh, there we go. All right, moving on. But you won't even be halfway through your AUG before you hear this. Honey, shut that thing up, it's making too much noise. <laughs> 